You want to say hi to everyone? You say hey guys. Hi guys. Do you remember a mummy and daddy's wedding? Mm. Do you remember dancing at the wedding? Mm. What was your favourite part of the wedding? It's probably. When we threw confetti. Was that your favourite? Yeah. Do you remember when daddy was singing on the guitar? Yeah. And he sang to you? Yeah. I think he was actually singing to me, but we'll just say it was to you. Yeah. <laughs> Did you wear a suit? Yeah. Ready, we'll put a photo up here of what you looked like. Did you look so handsome? <laughs> you did, didn't you? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, don't touch. That's the mic. What did we just have for lunch? A cyborg. A cyborg. My so, mic. No, that's my mic. Look at me. Yeah. I think it's time for your nap. Ew. 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 Dumb. Not uh, dumb. Uh, Daddy. Uh, yeah, it's mommy's turn to work now. We're in lockdown. Week five. No, no, no. Curtie's about to ruin my setup. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry, me. Sorry, man. Yes, we are still in lockdown. It's week five. So Kurt and I, Kurt, are you there? Do you want to say hey to them? Hi, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm busy with well. <laughs> We're tag teaming, so it's my turn to film right now and talk to you guys. Welcome to the ultimate girls night chatty video. It's not the night time, it's like 11 a.m. So just like girls brunch chatty video. If you've read the title of this video, then you know it is my wedding Q&A, or I should say our wedding Q&A. So Kurt and I got married two months ago at Byron Bay. So we live in Sydney, so here is Sydney. And and up here is Byron Bay. So I do want to disclaim throughout the video, I will be referencing myself a lot and saying I planned or I wanted because at the end of the day, Kurt didn't want to plan it. Like I feel like in most relationships, you have like your skill set or things you thrive at. And I would say mine is like planning and organizing and it's not really Kurt's. Why do you have no shirt on? Cause I'm eating a side this bottle, I don't get on Classic <laughs> lockdown style. Um, on the day of the wedding, Kurt yeah. was like, whoa, look at that, look at that. I'm like, Kurt, I've been planning this for a year. Like, yeah. I know. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool turn up. <laughs> not knowing what anything was gonna look like. <laughs> like no, the no. cake, you were like, oh, have you seen our cake? I'm like, have I? Have I seen our cake? I, I designed our I cake on I Photoshop. I organized a few things, but like when it came to the nitty gritty, I did not care one Kurt, bit what it looked like. No, but you did care because on the day you were like, this is so sick. I did two things for you, Seb, yeah. of like bringing yeah. the thing together. Kurt organized accommodation and cars, and then I pretty much organized the rest, which was good because I didn't want to organize cars and accommodation. So anyway. I'm going to say bye. Goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye, bye Fox. Have a good nap. So instead of me just like rambling on about the wedding, I thought I would leave it up to you guys to ask me the exact questions questions that you want to know because I know when I got engaged I was like so lost in terms of even where to start so yeah I went on Instagram story you guys sent in your questions so that's what we're going to be tackling today so I've decided to start here because I feel like this is the perfect question that I was even asking myself like two years ago so this one is I'm engaged I have no idea where to start before anything think about the kind of vibe that you want do you want country beach family dinner city chic every Everyone kind of has their own vibe in life. Your home often reflects that. Your outfits often reflect that. Your Instagram feed may reflect that. Just think what is authentically yourself. And for us, it was kind of a fusion between country and coastal. We're super beachy people, but I just didn't really want that classic barefoot beach wedding. It's not really our style in terms of like aesthetics and events. So yeah, we were kind of in between how are we going to achieve this coastal Byron feel, but also in the hint to lands and that warm family country kind of feeling as well. So instead of really focusing on that, we kind of said, what is the feeling we want in our wedding? And we wanted warm, summery, bright, fun, because a lot of Byron weddings, well, a lot of weddings these days are very neutral and white. I kind of said to Kurt, what do you think about putting some more color and vibrancy into our wedding? Because our relationship and our dynamic is very like bubbly and fun. And I feel like we're children at heart. Like Kurt and I are very childlike and we like having fun. So yeah, we wanted to kind of bring in that element with color and some unique quirky elements. Another major component of establishing the vibe was what color scheme was I going for? So I know how to use Photoshop. So I actually made my own mood board on Photoshop, but I kind of just ended up grabbing like different color schemes I liked. With the mood board, with your color scheme, you want to make sure, like I said, with the vibe, it is so authentic to you. So what I ended up doing was going through my wardrobe and thinking, what kind of clothes do I wear? Everything was very neutral with 
hints of pink, hints of mustard, very warm summery tones. So you can kind of go either way. You can go for like a warm summery color palette or a more cool toned color palette. So I'll put them here. If you're not familiar with warm tones and cool tones, I'm very much on the warm tone side. Everything I do kind of in my life is warm tone, whether it's my clothes, my house, our wedding. I really love those summery colors that make you feel warm and like coastal. I really gravitate towards that. So yeah, I looked around our house and I looked at our couches, our pillows. Like, let me even just grab a pillow and show you what I mean. Everything in our house is like mustard, burnt orange, like those kind of warm tones. So I created my own mood board. If I can find it, I will put it up here. And it was just like a cluster of different colors. It was screenshots off Pinterest of like bouquets I liked or bridesmaid vibes I liked. It was just like really fun, kind of messy, kind of rustic, but fun and bubbly. So that is where I started. Um. Okay, wait, I'm, I'm really sorry. Can I just pause the video for one second? I know we're really excited to see my wedding dresses, the ones I tried on but didn't buy, but before we get into that, one of the main questions I got was, how did I get my skin clear for the wedding? So this is the perfect time to talk about today's sponsor, Esme Skin Minerals. And I have been loving Esme for, I'm gonna say like two years now. So this routine I'm showing you is an awesome morning routine if you have sensitive acne prone skin, but you still want to look hydrated and glowy and dewy. So I'm showing you here the cleanser I'm using. It is the Probiotic Skin Milk Cleanser. I think this is my third or fourth bottle of it. As you can see, it doesn't foam up necessarily. If something foams up too much, it dries my skin out. Sadly, as we can see here, I'm almost out of my mini rose and bamboo exfoliant, but my skin has been responding really well to this one. I actually looked it up online and it has a 4.96 star rating. So if you're like me and you buy a lot of your skincare products online, then you may refer to the star rating to kind of determine if you wanna try something out. I know that's what I do. It's a really soft exfoliant. It refines and smooths the skin texture. It's also an antiseptic while moisturizing. So I pat my skin dry and then I get a little bit of water on my hands and I just press it into the skin. I remember reading somewhere that hyaluronic acid will penetrate the skin better or have more of that hydrating benefit if your skin is slightly damp. And then I put the hyaluronic serum over the top. Now I'm really curious to see what your opinion is on this. I've always been told to do oils last. So I actually do my sunscreen first, but this is the Skin Shield Natural Face Sunscreen. And again, this is really great for sensitive skin. I also I love how it's this pale yellow banana color so you're not going to get that white cast over your skin it is SPF 30 and it's also infused with carrot root oil and hyaluronic acid which we love this eye balm is actually my favorite product that I own from Esme I don't know why it's just like it feels really luxe and expensive and as you can see the tip of this eye balm is metal so I just keep this in my vanity like in my bathroom you don't even need to refrigerate it and it's always cold so I kind of use this like not really like a gua sha more like an eye massager it just feels really hydrating really cooling and especially on nights if I've been up with Fox and putting him back to sleep and I just feel like a weathered mum, this is a lifesaver in the morning. My final step is one of the Esme Skin Treats. This is the 24 karat gold nourishing oil. And I find this to be the perfect blend of nourishing and hydrating enough, but not so thick that I feel greasy. And as you can see, I'm putting it on my neck as well as the back of my hands. Okay, <laughs> don't judge me. If my hair is dirty and I know I'm gonna wash it that night, I will also put my face oil into the roots of my hair. Don't judge me. So Esme has given us a code it is SD gift so if you spend over $60 on Esme products you get a free full-size cleanser this is only valid until the 31st of August this obviously excludes gift cards and cannot be used in conjunction with any other offer Let's get back to the video. This next question requires a little bit of a story time. The question is, do you think your earrings completed your wedding look? Now, my good friend Kieran asked this question for a good reason. So I think it was like in our wedding vlog, I said, I need to tell you guys the story about these earrings. Fine. Oh, my earrings. Oh my gosh, I need to tell the story about that. Willie came and brought my earrings. And I never told you, so here we go. I will get into like my jewelry picking in a second, but let me just take you back to the night before our wedding. So. 
Kurt and I go into different rooms. We ended up staying at Elements of Byron, which is like our favorite accommodation in Byron Bay. We were there for like five nights and the whole time Kurt, myself and Fox shared a bungalow. But the night before our wedding, we decided to separate. So I stayed in like our family bungalow and Kurt went and stayed with his groomsmen. So Kurt goes to the other bungalow. So I take this time to like organize my stuff, organize my dress, get all my jewelry out so I can wake up in the morning and feel organized. So I'm searching for all of my jewelry. Now, mind you, I bought so much jewelry. Like I ended up wearing these pearl earrings, which I will show here. These are the earrings we're talking about. And I purchased a bunch of different like versions of this. I just wanted to have options on the day just in case something changed or in case I just like wanted to switch it up whatever but I had decided on these earrings from skin studios I think it's called skin studios and yeah I just I loved the look I had all my earrings planned out my rings my jewelry everything and yeah I just I loved them I had like a stack of earrings I had a bracelet it was really minimalistic but it was all planned out me as a bride like when I had this idea of what I was gonna look like and I had bought everything I was like okay cool I'm organized I'm done so I'm looking for these earrings everywhere I'm going through through my jewelry pouch, they weren't there. I'm going through my toiletry bag, they're not there. I'm literally throwing the room upside down. I cannot find them anywhere. So I ended up calling my bridesmaid saying, hey, did someone accidentally take my earrings? Did I leave them in your room? Like what is going on? So they all end up coming to my room. I think my mom comes, my dad's even there. I think I am crying at this point because there was a few stuff that was going wrong in the day. So I'm already like, it's like the straw that broke the camel's back that night. So I'm crying thinking, why is this happening to me? They are nowhere, they are nowhere to be seen and I'm like surely I brought them like I have looked everywhere they couldn't have been anywhere so this is the night before the wedding we were getting married the next day on a Saturday at 2 30 p.m. so one of my really good friends Kieran he was flying to Byron that morning so the wedding morning so I call him at like 9 30 or like 10 o'clock the night before the wedding he lives like 45 minutes away from me I'm on the phone crying to him saying I know you are probably about to go to sleep because you have a 5 a.m. flight but I need you to break into my house and check if I left my earrings in my room he's just just like one of those friends who's like yep 100% I'm there so I'm pretty sure him and his girlfriend ended up kind of like making a night of it making an adventure out of it and they drive to my house he calls me and he's like so how do I get into your house like how do I get in and let me just say our house is very secure we had our full alarm system on so if you even come close to our house this silent alarm goes off and it alerts the police it alerts like our security people and the security people check the footage and if anyone is near our house or like near the front door they will call us but if they can't get onto us, they call the police. So Kieran is waiting in this car because I've warned him of this. I'm like, don't go near the house until I call you and it's all planned. I'm talking to my little sister about this. I'm like, how are we gonna get him in the house? Like, can we break a window? Can we, is there a spare key somewhere? Like, how can we get Kieran in our house? And my sister says, oh, one of my old school friends, she is married to a locksmith. I don't even know this locksmith. I don't even know this friend of Talia's, but she ends up calling her friend saying, hey, I know it's like 9.30 PM and your husband is watching like the grand final of football or something but I need him to go to my sister's house and break in so I think I get on the phone to the locksmith husband and I'm like hey I'm the soon-to-be bride for tomorrow you don't know me I don't know you but I need you to break into my house and I think I like sent him some ID of mine that like proved it was our house so he's like yeah cool let me just finish watching the grand final or something he was like watching some kind of footy or like basketball or whatever so we have to wait till he's finished watching his sport Kieran is in the car out the front of my house chilling out I think he orders a pizza to my house to like eat pizza with his girlfriend oh my gosh I just I felt so bad but it really moments like this make you realize like how much people really love you and how lucky you are to be surrounded by such beautiful people like Kieran my sister and this locksmith that I've never even met anyway the locksmith ends up turning up so I call Kieran and I'm like okay locksmith man and Kieran walk up to the house together and I'm anticipating a call from the security system. So I hang up from Kieran and the locksmith starts working on the door. Now you can't break into our front door because it's like a special kind of door. They try the side door. They're working on the side door for a few minutes and like clockwork, I get a call from our security system saying, we don't want to alarm you. There are two men with backpacks and hoodies trying to break into your house. We're calling the police. So luckily I could say, oh no, they're my friends. I'm a bride. I kind of told the girl the story. She laughed and she goes, okay, cool. I will disable the alarms and put them back on when they leave. I felt pressure hoping like they could get into the house and more so that these stupid earrings were in the house. Like imagine my embarrassment after all this kerfuffle, after everyone wasting their time and the earrings aren't even there. So the whole time I'm praying, being like, please get into the house and please, 
please make me have forgotten the earrings and they're like in my top drawer or something. So anyway, they try the side door and it's not working. Like I said, we spent a lot of money on these locks. So good thing it doesn't work. So they go around to the back door and I'm pretty sure that's the one that ended up working. So this locksmith is working there for a while and they finally get in the back door. So the locksmith husband leaves, which yes, I paid him like his overtime rate, his nighttime rate. So, I mean, he got paid out of it. And Kieran is in the house. So I direct him to my jewelry box. It's not there. I get him to FaceTime me. He's showing me the jewelry box. He's showing me anywhere it could be. It's literally not there. My heart is sinking, thinking I have wasted everyone's time. I don't have earrings for tomorrow. It was just like, oh, it was just bad. So I think I said, oh, I'll call you back. Let me just double check the cabin one more time. So I hang up. I think I was like with my sister or with my mom or something, or maybe even with Fox. I'm literally praying out loud saying, please, literally, please, Jesus, help me find these earrings whether they are here, whether they're at home, help me find them. So I call Kieran back. I'm like, hey, can you just check this one little pouch? They are potentially in this one pouch in my jewelry cabinet. So he opens the pouch and he's like, oh my gosh, they're there. I, I honestly started crying. I was like laughing, crying. I could not believe that all of this was actually for something. So that was just one of the best moments because it was like such a journey to get there. So he was laughing and he was like, okay, I'll bring them to you tomorrow morning. So yeah, he had like a 5 a.m. flight or something like that. He had to get up at like 4.30. I think he had the first flight into Byron Bay, which is like, yeah, 7.30 or something. And yeah, I felt so bad because he got home at like midnight, had to wake up at like 4.30 in the morning to get the first flight to Byron Bay. And for some reason, he didn't come and give it to me. I think he was just like being a respectful friend he like didn't want to see me before the wedding so he gave it to my brother-in-law Willie which is my older sister's husband and he came and gave it to me and I think I was just like crying I was like so happy because I was super super happy in the morning but um yes Kieran the earrings 100% completed my look and <sighs> just such a funny story and like we just talk about it all the time now and it's just like you know you have those friends that would just do anything for you and they just save the day that is Kieran did I have a wedding planner I didn't necessarily have a wedding planner but I did organize a wedding coordinator for the day so originally I thought I'm gonna do all the planning I can do everything myself and I just need someone on the day making sure everything's happening so no one is coming to me with issues because on your wedding day you just want to relax you want to enjoy it you've spent all this time planning you just want to have a good day so I think it was like five months later leading up to our wedding day, I decided to kind of renegotiate that contract and I wanted her a little bit more. I had picked all the vendors I wanted, but I didn't want to be their point of contact. So our wedding was on like a private property, which means you have to get like insurance. You have to get all your vendors to sign these agreements. Like there's a lot of like legalities around it. And I just didn't want to have to deal with that. I was cool to pick all the vendors, like pick what linen I wanted, the cake that I wanted, the band and all that kind of stuff. But I wanted all of those vendors to go to someone else to communicate so I kind of renegotiated with Rach my coordinator so she was kind of a blend between like the point of contact for the wedding and the daily coordinator so it was like somewhere in between so obviously everyone has a wedding budget I would honestly say whether it's a part of your budget or it's one of your wedding gifts from your family or your bridesmaids having a day coordinator like if you can have the blend that I had that's awesome but having someone coordinated on the day and like a go-to person for that day was the best decision of pretty much our entire wedding because if stuff went wrong I didn't necessarily know about it it just made me relax on the day and know that everything was taken care of by someone else who was a professional in that field how to soak up the day okay I want to see if you remember this the day before our wedding one of my best friends Sophie she's like a reoccurring theme in these questions but she pulled me aside and she was like the best advice I got given before my wedding because she's married to her husband book she said the best advice anyone ever gave me was pull book aside during the wedding during the reception and just have a moment to yourselves and say to each other, this is our wedding, let's soak it up. Do you remember doing that? Yeah, don't remember when. <laughs> <laughs> I remember having the discussion. I don't remember doing that though. We did it twice. We, one, did, it we did it once when we looked at the the inside of oh, the, yeah. we did it once then, like looking onto like the setting, the dining setting. That's probably the best way what, of putting it. Yeah, so the situation Kurt's explaining is obviously we hadn't seen each other before the ceremony. Kurt stayed with the boys. I stayed by myself slash with the girls. And then we had the ceremony. We saw each other. It was beautiful, romantic. And then right after the ceremony, we kind of got to go just like together, me and Kurt. And we got to have the 
first look into the reception hall. For me, it was a massive moment because I had done everything on like Pinterest and Photoshop and planned this all out and I was like, I can't believe this is my Pinterest board come to life. Now I should say, this is one of the questions. One of the most important people on the day was our florist, Amy. Amy is the owner of Willow and Bear, which is a florist, a florist. florist? Yeah, she's a florist here in Cronulla. She went above and beyond her role, I suppose. She helped me so much with like my vision, my vibe. I think because our vibe is very similar. So I kind of like showed her the mood board that I made on Photoshop. The thing that really helped me plan the wedding was getting vendors I trusted. Like Amy, my florist, I did not have to micromanage her one bit. You know, like there's specific people, maybe it's like a cake person or a dress person that you have to be super specific and say, this is the kind of icing, this is the color, not this kind of brown, this kind of brown. Amy was not like that. I kind of gave her my mood board and I said, you're better at this than me, obviously. So just go with it. And she ended up hand drying all of these oranges to hang down our garland, so like our sick. arch. Did she just tell you she was doing that? Did you know that was happening? So I went to visit her at her house because she has toddlers. Anyway, I was gonna bring Fox over and whatever. So I went to her house to like have a final meeting with her and her kitchen was covered in these dried fruits. <laughs> and I was like, what is this? And she's like, oh, this is for your, this is for your arbor. I was like, you dried these by hand? She's like, yeah. It was crazy. So she really went above and beyond. So yeah, that's if sick. you are in the it area, so good though. highly, highly mm. recommend her. She was amazing. I feel like that's one of my main questions is like, what was your arch? It's called an arbor and I will say, it's not a cheap arbor like she warned me because I said to her I was like I want a thick luscious big arbor like I want that to be the center of attention and she was like well that's a lot of that's a lot of flowers but it was so worth it moving on to the next question vows are we glad we wrote our own vows yeah 100% it's so much more personal and like it's nice to talk from the heart yeah you know, so it's, it's something that you don't, you, I feel like you don't do very often. Mm. It's like, look someone in the eye and tell them how much you, you love them. And, and why and, you and, love and, them. And, yeah, and, and why. What you promised yeah. them. It was really personal. One of the best things we did, if you're going to write your own vows, I was nervous that one of us would go like more romantic than the other, or one of us would go more jokey, <laughs> or mine would go for a really long time and Kurt's were really small. So again, my reoccurring theme, friend Sophie comes into play. She, <laughs> she wrote, right. she, she, she read them both. She wrote her own <laughs> vows as well with her husband and she was like oh let me read yours let me read Kurt's I won't tell you what's in them but I'll make sure they're the same tone they're the kind of the same length and um yeah they were like our vows were a mixture of like obviously professing our love and like what we promised but also like banter it was like Some making fun of each other and stuff was your strawberry picking thing in your vows or was it after no that was when I when the ring was going on the finger oh okay so quick question mm. about the strawberry if you don't know what I'm talking about this is the photo I often post and people like why is he proposing to you during your wedding <laughs> so long story short my dream proposal which I told Kurt Kurt was like if you could get proposed to in any this is before we were engaged so I'm thinking cool I'm gonna tell him this idea and he's gonna do it so he's like what's your dream proposal I said being out in the hinterland strawberry picking I've never picked fresh fruit right like all I want to do is go strawberry picking I turn around he's down on one knee Engaged. Yeah, but you know what? If we went strawberry picking, you would know it's coming. You'd guess it. This it would have been romantic. Anyway, <laughs> so if you are not familiar with our proposal story, I will link it up here in the cards. Go and watch that. But we got engaged in Hawaii and it kind of didn't go to plan. I had the flu. Yeah. We were on a balcony. And it was the last day. I, yeah, look. Yeah. I'm in my pajamas, whatever. It so was still it, cute. <laughs> so anyway, we would often talk about it and like, I would kind of say it. I wouldn't talk about it. Sarah would often bring it up and be I like, would say, that was the worst proposal ever. <laughs> or I would make a joke and be like, oh, if only I got proposed to in a strawberry field. I'd be like, oh my goodness. So I didn't go. think anything of it. Like it was done. I, I'm engaged, like whatever. Then as we're exchanging the rings, Kurt's yep. best man comes Mitch. out with this bush, looks like a Christmas tree with all these strawberries on it with a bar. Basket, and I got to pick all the strawberries and put it in a basket and then he re-proposed to me with my <laughs> wedding band Which I will show you guys and here. Then we got married straight after it <laughs> So both of them are from Natalie Marie whenever I talk about brands people think that it's because we got it for free It's not you this the, is just the, have you got the other one? Where's the other one? This one. Oh, that yeah. was my wedding present. You can stack it together, but it's like I'll It becomes show you. quite like it's big a bit intense. Is that right? Yeah, oh, okay. That's a bit intense for me. Like that's a lot of bling on one hand. So we customized both 
both of them from Natalie Marie. And yes, we paid for them. As soon as you have like over X amount of followers, people assume you get your whole wedding for free. I'm telling you, that's not the case. And you don't, <laughs> and you don't really I want- I wish. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't I because- mean, way, way cheaper. No, because <laughs> you don't want to spend your whole wedding nah. saying like tagging things and like doing pictures for people. Nah. It's like- It's just funny. Like it seems like it's such a simple thing to do, but a lot of thought goes into like brand yeah, content. content. Yeah, content. It's like, we just wanted to enjoy the day. Yeah. Speaking of, let's talk about wedding dresses. Actually, is there anything else you can help with before you leave? Yeah, quick. Songs. Okay, what did we walk down the aisle to? We had a duo do it. Do you remember that They did names? an amazing cover of it. I don't remember now. Butted Band. But, that's it, Butted Band. Butted Band from yep. Bar and Bar Bang. Bang. They were Lennox awesome. Head. I'll were, link them down the bottom. They were amazing. They were so good. Yeah. Um, And they, they sang, uh, I don't know, uh, Spirit Cold by... Tall Heights. Tall Heights. <laughs> you know how every couple, well, most couples have like a song? That's our song. So we sent them the kind of section we wanted and they learnt it and they harmonized and it was it was beautiful. Oh, if not better than yeah. Tall Heights. Yeah. Like it was so good. And when we walked out of the ceremony, what song was it? Oh, I can't remember the name of that one. <laughs> how Bizarre. How Bizarre. How Bizarre. Again, they played it. What was our entry song to our reception? Bag Raiders, yeah. Shooting Stars. Yeah. Classic. Do, do, that's, how you, that's how you get the vibe started. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's good. What was our first dance song? Paper Kites. Oh, what's it called? Bloom. Bloom. Yeah. And me and my dad's first dance. <laughs> Hopefully. You I don't actually, remember anything. <laughs> honestly. And we didn't even really drink. Like, you have no excuse. Nah. I feel like our wedding was super chill as well. We had a few people who were like, I've been to some really like formal weddings and yours was so fun because yeah. it was so you guys. That's like, why I say it wasn't extravagant. Like people say your wedding was extravagant. I'm like, no, it wasn't. It was just really fun and bright. Our wedding was very chill and kind of like a festival mm. kind of thing. And, and when like, we were like, when we were at the altar, we were just cracking jokes the whole time and like being ourselves, mm. you know, like mm. in, a, in a nice, cute, loving way. Like it and was, Fox would jump in and interrupt like he interrupts yeah. our life. Yeah, yeah. And like when you have a toddler, <laughs> when you have a toddler involved, it, it can't be too serious. And our, and our pastor knows us really well and he can yeah. have a joke with it. Like it was just really, it was so, it was just a good vibe. It was really personal. It. I didn't, it was so perfect. But okay. I get uncomfortable in weddings that are really formal yeah. and like really proper. Cause I'm like, we're not really formal and no. we're not really proper. We're not very like over the top of each other affectionate no. either. We're yeah. not really PDA. We're pretty relaxed. Even um our first kiss, Beth and Brenton were like, we've never seen you kiss before. <laughs> <laughs> Did I throw a bit of tongue in? No, I said don't. I said don't. Yeah. Okay, was there anything that was a waste of money? No. No, perfect. the one thing I thought I would maybe regret was I spent $500 on these amber goblets. I'll put a picture here. I gave everyone on the table their own amber goblet because- What's an amber goblet? Like, honestly- I didn't even know what it was. The like cauldron cup, like the cup that we drank wine out of. Oh. I sent $500. Yeah, I didn't even notice that detail. <laughs> okay, okay, well, so I was like, you know what? $500 for goblets, like that's very extravagant. But as soon as I saw the reception area, I, I was like, that was such a great decision. Sick. Anyway, let's get to the fun questions. All right, I'm going to go. Love you guys. See you later. Okay, the main question you guys want to know in this video is all about the wedding dress. So I mentioned in like my first ever wedding Q&A, this was when I was designing the wedding and planning it all, that I had picked a wedding dress. I had paid a deposit and then I had a dream that night and I changed my mind and I ended up calling and changing the dress. So let me just start from the start. I didn't really have an idea of what I wanted in a wedding dress. I kind of went to my first store and I'm going to pop up some photos here of different dresses I tried on. So I went to my first store, which was Hope X Page, um, which is local to me because my friend Emma works there. She was so nice. They had such beautiful dresses and I did love some of them. But strangely enough, I actually really gravitated towards a more structured and heavy dress which isn't really my normal style and that's why I liked it because I would say my style is like very casual, laid back, relaxed and neutral and not too dramatic and I found these heavy structured dresses quite dramatic which I liked because I'm like this is my wedding day, I want something unique and different. I tried it on, I really liked it and then I kind of went home and thought like do I want to do something different that I'm never really wearing or do I want to find something that's really true to me and really authentic and I don't think there's a right decision 
decision. I think like you can totally go opposite to yourself so everyone's shocked and it's an opportunity for you to look completely different or you can really match your own personal style to a wedding dress. So yeah, I went to that first store. I liked some of them, but I didn't love anything. And then I went to this other huge store in Camden called Love Marie Bridal and they have so many dresses. So that place was awesome because I really got to try on everything and anything. And my mum kind of made me promise her whatever they pull out for me, just try it on because you don't know what's going to look good on you until you try it on. It's like you may think you want like strapless, puffy ball gown, but then you end up walking out with like a sleek pink dress. Like you just never know. I knew I wanted something kind of extravagant, kind of big, like not a big ball gown, but I wanted like something A-line and flowy. Lol, jokes on me. So yeah, I'm at Love Marie Bridal. I'm trying on a bunch of dresses and I fall in love with this one here. I love it. I'm like, yes, it's very common right now or I knew it was really popular. She had kind of said to me, a lot of brides have been picking this at the moment. I knew that maybe like Instagram may be flooded with this dress, but I was like, I don't care. I love it. Like I feel really beautiful in it. I feel like it's really me and I still feel like like that dress is very, very me. So I really liked it. I didn't put a deposit or anything down. I said, I'm gonna go home, think about it, and I will come back another day and maybe like try it on again. So I go home and I actually got contacted by a pretty prestigious bridal couture brand here in Sydney. So they said they wanted to collaborate with me and gift me a dress. So I ended up going for a fitting and I just kind of truly realized that that couture brand and that couture style wasn't me. Like I felt really uncomfortable you know, I felt really privileged and really lucky that this brand reached out to me and wanted to work with me, but I kind of decided that that brand didn't really reflect my own style. And like I said before, I didn't really want to collaborate. I just wanted to kind of buy my dress, love it, and not have the pressure of like doing content and tagging and all that kind of stuff. So for each appointment at the bridal boutiques, I brought someone different. Like sometimes I'd bring my mom or my sisters or my maid of honor, Tanika. So for the final one, when I went back to Camden to Love Marie Bridal, I took Tanika. I said, I want your opinion because I see her every day. She knows my true style. So I tried this one back on for her and it's not necessarily her style, but she said, oh my gosh, yes, this is so you. Like you look so beautiful. This is what I imagine you like as a bride. And at the appointment previously, she had pulled out this dress that was really sleek. And I said to her, I don't want a sleek dress. Like every day I wear active wear. Like I always kind of show my body. I don't really show my body in clothes. Like you guys know in casual clothes, it's always floppy. But I feel like because I'm always in a crop and tights that I'm always kind of in that kind of sleek look anyway. So yeah, at that first appointment, I was like, no, I don't want to try this sleek dress on, put it away. So yeah, Tanika and I are at this second appointment where I'm about to purchase my dream wedding dress. So the owner, Amy, she says, okay, cool. Like, I think that's your dress. It looks beautiful. Can you just try on this dress? for size. It's by the same designer. She's like, it's not your style. Like this is not the dress you're going to get. I just need to check if you are an eight or a six on the boobs because I'm a double A. So she's like, this one's in an eight. Let's just like see how it fits you. So I put on this dress, which wasn't even supposed to be like a try on. And I come out and both Amy and Tanika are like, and they kind of didn't want to say anything because they knew my heart was set on the original flowy like boho dress. And I kind of broke the ice. I was like, I think I love this dress. And Tanika was like, I told you, this was the dress I said a week ago. You should have tried this on. This is what I was thinking for you. And I was like, yeah, like this is so weird. I would have never, I would have never thought to try on that dress because I've seen this dress on Instagram. Like I followed the designer and I thought, oh, it's a bit like too on trend. It's like very coastal. It's very mermaid. It's just not me. But when I I put it on I was like it just really flattered my body it really flattered my structure and kind of rewinding back to my first ever bridal appointment as much as I wanted an extravagant big structured dress the dress kind of wore me I'm a pretty petite small person so these big dresses even though they weren't in my size that didn't help trying them on like they obviously clamp them I just felt like they were flooding me a lot of the time so in this kind of mermaid style dress I, I think it's called the Monstera or Montana Montreux. This is the name of the dress. I just felt like it really complemented my body shape, my structure, and the dress wasn't wearing me. I was wearing the dress. And I know people say that a lot, but it's so true. I was kind of in this weird moment of like, I know this dress looks 
looks better on me. But the other one is more of a wedding dress to me. Like I imagined myself in like a flowy dress and for photos I could like flow it in the wind. Then I also started thinking that's more Kurt style as well. Like the flowy one, Kurt's very like boho and whimsical. Not that you should ever buy your wedding dress to impress your partner, but I was kind of like weighing up all the options and I was like, no, I'm gonna go with my gut and I'm gonna go with the first dress. So Tanika didn't really say anything. She was like, are you sure? Like I want you to be happy, but like if that's what you want, cool. So I ended up putting a deposit on that first dress and on the way home, I'm saying to Tanika, do you think I made the right decision? Like, what do you think? What do you think? And obviously she's like, look, personally, I liked the second one, but I love both and I want you to be happy. And I feel like if you love the first, like she was saying all the right things. So I go home and I'm looking at photos of both of them. I'll even show you here. I made like a layout of comparing both of them. And I just kept thinking, I look better in the second one. I just, I don't know. Anyway, that night I had a dream and I was wearing that second kind of mermaid coastal dress and I loved it. I loved my look. It was my wedding day. I felt super confident and I woke up the next day thinking that's the dress I want. That is the dress I want. And I kind of just like revisited what vibe do I want to emulate as a bride. I wanted something a little bit more modern, clean. This sounds weird, but even being a mum, like we had a toddler at our wedding. I felt like that looked really sophisticated and beautiful, especially for like family photos. Whereas I thought the whimsical boho one was a little bit younger. It was still beautiful. So anyway, I ended up kind of changing my mind. So I'm like frantically calling Amy from the bridal boutique. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I know I've already paid the deposit. Can I swap it? She's like, yeah, no worries. Because luckily it was from the same designer. So I could just kind of swap the dress and that was pretty much the last day I could order that dress for it to get made in time because it's made in like Turkey or something. So actually I only got it like a week before flying to Byron and then I had to get tailored and all that stuff. So I got it in the nick of time. Honestly, I love my dress. I love my dress so much. I love my veil. My veil was really, really simple. And in terms of jewelry, I kind of just tried everything on. Like I love jewelry. So I have a big collection at home anyway. So I tried on like big earrings. I tried on delicate stuff. I just tried on a bunch of different things and um, I just love what I ended up picking for it. And then my shoes, I was actually prepared to buy designer shoes because funny thing, so the dress I was going to get gifted originally for my wedding was like, I had a budget of like 30K. Like I was allowed to design a dress that was like 30 and my dress ended up being like three grand. So I was pretty stoked about that. Like in terms of the wedding dresses I was looking at, I was really, really happy with that price point of the dress of my dreams. So there's a question here saying, if things like the weather didn't go to plan, what would have been different? Actually, the weather wasn't to plan. So originally we'd never had the teepee. So this photo here, you can obviously see this is our ceremony and we've got the pews, which is where the people sat and then the teepee over the top. So it was torrential rain for like three days before our wedding. So the flooring, oh, we also had to get flooring. So it was on a field, like a big patch of grass with like trees around and like cows and everything. It was mud. It was like fully sludge. So we ended up having to pay extra for jute flooring and a huge teepee. And it's funny because looking at the images now, it kind of just ties the whole look together. It's very like Woodstock Festival, Byron hinterland, like fairy tale vibes. It's so true what they say, like sometimes plan B ends up being better than plan A. But we were so lucky, like it was raining all morning and it stopped raining as soon as we got there. I walked down the aisle, we got all of our photos. We even got like a little glimmer of the sun so we could get some back lit photos. So I'll put a bunch of photos up here while I'm talking. Yeah, it just ended up being so good. And then during our reception, I think it rained, but we were inside the barn anyway. I also want to say my hair, my hair, we kind of made up on the day. My makeup and hairstylist were incredible. So I got my makeup done by Leah, who does all my makeup for White Fox Boutique. She's like my go-to makeup artist. My hair was incredible. So Leah, my makeup artist, actually recommended my hairstylist to me, who was Lily from Lily Bridal Co. I've actually worked with her before in a previous campaign campaign and I ended up doing a trial with her because I brought in all these inspiration photos that I wanted and she did them so well but on my head it just didn't look right. I'll throw a photo up here of different hairstyles we tried. We did like a sleek bun as you guys know like today I kind of always have my hair out of my face in a bun. It was a bit too sleek and it just looked a bit too harsh. We tried like a princess layer kind of 
regal braid. Again, it was like really heavy on my little head. We just couldn't find anything in the middle. So I went home, I said, I don't know, like I was kind of chill. And then I came across this photo on Pinterest here. It was this girl's bun with a scarf through it. So I ended up finding a scarf on Etsy and I had to wait for it to come from China, which literally took a month. So luckily I picked this look a month in advance and literally on the morning of the wedding, she just winged it. We put some extensions in like my clip-in extensions and she tied a white silk scarf in my bun. Oh, it was just so me. Like it was casual enough where I'm like, I look like myself. I will never regret it, but it was unique enough and formal enough. I just, uh, I love it. I love my shoes. I love my jewelry. I love my hair. I love my dress. And I, I never, ever, ever thought I would be a bride who actually liked my look. Like I put a lot of pressure on myself. Like I think a lot of us women do. And I just thought on my wedding day, I'm like going to regret my dress or I'm going to have a bad hair day. And I just, I really felt beautiful. It's such like a relief to me. And it really, it sounds bad, but it really did help me have a good day because I looked in the mirror and I, I felt like myself as a bride and I felt really beautiful and I felt really confident. So that just like put me in a good headspace for the rest of the day. I feel like I've honestly been talking forever. So I'm just gonna do a few more really popular questions. How did I save money? So look, our wedding was quite expensive, but I saved money in terms of doing some DIY stuff. So I painted 99% of the vases. You guys would have seen there was like the terracotta and the blush vases. I will actually put the vlog up here of how I did it. So I bought all the vases from like op shops. So yeah, I painted all of the vases because I think I ended up having like 60 vases or something, which yeah, if you're gonna buy a $20 vase, that adds up. So I just wanted to buy like $3 vases and just minimize that cost. We made our wedding favorite from scratch as well so we did these little I actually have them wait there we ended up making these from scratch they're little glass test tubes with lemon lime and bitters tea in it so you're supposed to like ice it so I got these printed with everyone's name on it it's like a rough cardboard I bought a huge sheet of this organic cotton and then I ripped it up into ribbon pieces so it looked rustic and like farm like and I just thought these were so cute and they just really suited the vibe of the reception room and they were on everyone's plate so they were really cute now I will say the print Printing of our invites was really expensive, a lot more expensive than I thought because we had gold foiling on them. I'll zoom it in here so you can kind of see. These were our invites. Now my little sister designed them so I kind of like drew up a mock-up of what I wanted and then she put it in like InDesign or whatever she did. This was the actual invite that we gave everyone. It kind of looks like a passport. So that was really cool. And then this was like a boarding pass that said like come to Byron and this QR code actually worked so they could scan it and check in and RSVP for our wedding. Actually, I want to include that as one of my main tips is organize a wedding website that helps your guests RSVP and put in dietary requirements and tell them travel details because the last thing you want is your phone blowing up from like all your relatives and all your friends saying how do I get there what do I wear put it all on a website and then everyone can read everything so I just wanted to quickly show you guys I'm really bad at getting photo albums made or like getting full-on scrapbooks made so I decided to do this in the moment while I had everything because when we got back from Byron I had so much stuff I had like a bunch of Polaroid photos because we had Polaroid cameras around the room where people could just like take photos. And I just had like a bunch of memorabilia from the day. So I thought I'm just going to make a really rustic scrapbook in this. And then eventually when I have time, I'll make our proper wedding album, like our more formal one. This is our wedding scrapbook. I just love it. I wish you guys could feel this because it's like recycled paper. And I just have a bunch of different Polaroids in here. Let me turn this down so you guys can see. This was actually our guest signing book so everyone has a little note there for us accompanied by a photo so I just stuck the photos in so we have a bunch of that stuff this was the song that Kurt sang at our ceremony these were the menus we had designed for the tables and um, this was my sister's speech that's my dad's speech. This was a leftover packet of our confetti. I got our confetti from the whole bride. I've shared it on my Instagram and it's actually biodegradable confetti that you can throw in the air. I think it's made of rice. So when it rains or you can just like hose it down, it just disintegrates. Oh, and then this is the silk from my bouquet. The silk again is from the whole bride. That letter is, I think that's either my vows. I think that's my vows. Kurt's vows, a letter from Kurt, a letter from my mom. That was such a great letter. Letters from my sisters and my bridesmaids. 
Bridesmaids. And that's all I've got there so far, but I do need to add to it. And then all my girlfriends wrote me notes at my hen's party as well. So I've read all these, I just need to stick them in. Yeah, I would say if you're a person like me who says they're gonna do an album and you put it off, just do a scrapbook like that. So you make sure that you don't lose anything, you don't lose photos and like memorabilia. And then you can do a more formal scrapbook afterwards. Honestly, look, there are so many other questions, but I've honestly been talking for over an hour. So if you would like a part two to this, then I'm definitely open to filming that for you. So just comment below, let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really supports my channel and make sure you subscribe because I upload new videos every single week. I really hope this video inspired you to plan your own wedding or just give you some more direction of how to create your dream day. I will see you in my next video. Bye. Do, 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 do.